Hello, everyone. This is Live Life Well host Robert Landau with another episode of America's Greatest Personalities. This episode, we cover the wonderful Jimmy Stewart. Stay tuned. The great Jimmy Stewart was totally opposite of the typical Hollywood male star back in the day. How so? Well, he was kind of anti-Hollywood. Uh, how so? Well, he didn't need all the icing on the cake. He didn't need all the extravagance. He didn't need all the pop publicity. He didn't want any of that stuff. He couldn't have cared less about glamour and expensive things. He wanted to live a real life and surround himself with real people because if movie making and all of those things that tend to go along with it couldn't be real, at least Jimmy's life could be genuine and true. And if you ask me to give you one word that best describes Jimmy Stewart, I would say it would be genuine. And genuine with a capital G. Here are some facts that you might not know about the great Jimmy Stewart. Did you know that he was voted the ninth greatest movie star of all time by Premier Magazine. Did you know that when Stewart served as an officer and pilot in the Army Air Corps in World War II, one of the sergeants in his unit happened to have been Walter Matthau. Did you know that Jimmy had a dislike of Hollywood's war movies, explaining that they were hardly ever accurate or true to form? Did you know that Jimmy's mother's maiden name was Jackson? Her father, Colonel Samuel Jackson, served in the Civil War. Did you know that Jimmy wore the exact same hat in all of his Western films? John Ford, the great director, once complained on the set of Two Road together back in 1961 by saying these words, and I quote, great, now I have actors with hat approval, unquote. Did you also know that Stewart was very, very good friends with Ronald Reagan, Henry Fonda, John Wayne, and Gary Cooper? And did you know that of all of the movies Stewart had made, his absolute favorite was back in 1946, the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Many people feel that Academy Award winning actor Jimmy Stewart ended up playing himself in just about all of the amazing 81 films that he ended up making. In a career that lasted close to a very impressive 50 years, Stewart most often played this a very modest man that strove to overcome great odds to achieve his dreams. And that is who I believe Jimmy Stewart was and will always also be in the hearts of many movie lovers around the world. He was born on May 20th, 1908 in Indiana. Uh, and it was actually Indiana Pennsylvania. <laughs> Stewart grew up with two younger sisters. Jimmy's parents were very educated and they also were very strict. The Stewarts could afford most of what they wanted as Jimmy's father, even though he was a Princeton graduate, would run the family hardware store in Indiana, PA, that had been around since 1853. But the hardwood, the hardware store actually did very well. Jimmy had a happy childhood, all six foot three inches of him, and enjoyed to that end playing football, writing plays that he would perform in, and singing in the Glee Club. He went to Princeton to study architecture, but almost halfway through, absolutely knew that acting would be what he wanted to do for the rest of his days. 
After he graduated, he joined a theater company where he would meet someone that would end up being a lifelong friend, Henry Fonda. After appearing in a number of Broadway plays, Stewart took a train to Hollywood to try his luck there, who just happened to be his roommate during his early days in Hollywood. Well, it was Henry Fonda. After a talent agent agreed to get Jimmy into motion pictures, Stewart would end up making no less than 24 movies over the next five years. That, my friends, is a pretty good agent. Some of those memorable early movies were You Can't Take It With You, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and the one and only The Philadelphia Story. When World War II occurred, Stewart became a pilot as part of the U.S. Army Air Corps back in 1941. It was during this time that Jimmy became the commander of a bomber squadron and ended up flying an astounding 25 missions as a highly decorated colonel. Kudos to him for that. Once the war was over, Stewart would end up making the movie that people probably remember and cherish him the most for. It was called It's a Wonderful Life. Jimmy would end up marrying a lady by the name of Gloria McLean. Their marriage would be one of Hollywood's longest lasting, amazing, unheard of 45 years. They would have four children, two boys from Gloria's first marriage, and two twin girls from their marriage. Stewart's films are classics, such as Harvey, Call Northside North 777, The Glenn Miller Story, one of my personal favorites, The Spirit, oh, and by the way, in The Glenn Miller Story, Stewart looks exactly like Glenn Miller. It, it's a great um, true to life film about the great Glenn Miller. Do see it if you haven't, but see any of Stewart's films if you haven't. He also made The Spirit of St. Louis, Vertigo, and Anatomy of a Murder and so many more. In his later years, Jimmy would make many memorable appearances on television. One of my favorites, uh, go on to YouTube sometime and uh, do a search for clips of Jimmy Stewart and Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. They are wonderful appearances and really gives you a good clue as to who Jimmy Stewart really was. And what a wonderful kind man, heart-filled man with a wonderful sense of humor he was. If you happen to have caught many of his appearances on The Tonight Show, you will agree with me. He also loved to write poetry and even published uh, a very popular book of his poetry. We would lose this great movie star, but even more important, this truly great man on July 2nd, 1997. The great Jimmy Stewart was 89 years of age when he passed. His wife actually passed three years before he did, something Jimmy's friends understandably say that he never got over. Newsweek magazine, one said, and I quote, it's nice to remember a world when a movie star was also a gentleman, unquote. The Detroit Free Press also once said, and I quote, Stewart's shy stutter, every guy charm, and extraordinary range of classic film roles made him one of the most loved and admired of all American actors, unquote. And you know what? I say amen to that. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host with another episode of America's Greatest Personalities.